you family what a blessing to be together this afternoon once again for our midday connection it's always a blessing to come your way and to have you join me and it's always a blessing to know that you will be here when the time is up to get a word and to stand in prayer and so this afternoon i'm excited to come your way with the word and also to get an encouragement and uplifting in our spirit so that we can stand upon the word of God and pray. And uh, not just pray, but to pray to bring into manifestation the written word, which is the living word, which brings into manifestation the promises of God. Listen to me, child of God, as this year comes to a close, it's an indication that a season is coming to an end. And every season, God has a declaration. He has a statement he will make. And the question is, what is it that God made you aware in this season? What is it that God specifically spoke concerning this season? And yesterday, we began this new series I call The Finish Line because that is where God wants you to be at the end of each season. He wants you to be that champion. Bible says you are more than a conqueror. A conqueror is somebody that conquers something. And if there is something that you were meant to conquer in this season that is still standing in your face, you want to look at that thing like Bible declares, who are thou, O mountain, before Zerubbabel, you shall be made a plain. And so this afternoon, I want you to know that every mountain before you, whether it be it a mountain in ministry, a mountain spiritually, a mountain of education, whatever mountain it is, I want you to know there is an anointing that is upon you to level that mountain until that mountain becomes what? A plain. Yesterday we read a scripture in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 where Paul is admonishing his son in ministry, a young pastor Timothy, and telling him how he has been able to finish his race. And uh, the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 7 and 8, this is Paul speaking. He said, I have fought the good fight. And I made very clear to you that it's not every fight you must engage in. It's not every business you jump in. It's not everything in ministry you must do. It's not everybody you can get married to. It's not every relationship you can enter into. He said, I have fought the good fight. It means there are certain engagements that are not good. There are certain fights that are not good. A boxer strategically will choose who he fights. A boxer who just won the title will not be in a haste to fight somebody he knows he cannot win against. That boxer will want to hold on. I tell you there are dynamics of every sport. A boxer will rather choose somebody that would bring him more money a boxer that would increase his ratings, a boxer that would bring, bring him more popularity, not a boxer that will quickly take away the crown from him. And so you must choose your fights. You must choose your engagements. You must choose your battles. And the only way you choose battles that are meant for you to receive victory is when you do that in collaboration with the Holy Spirit. You don't do it out of your mind. You don't engage in that business because whoever taught you or spoke to you about it made you believe that this is business that you can make so much money. We don't do those things. We don't engage in those activities because they look lucrative. We engage in those business activities because we are inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I will read a scripture to you regarding that because there are, there are things that we must understand through the teaching of God's word. Hallelujah. I, I love the fact that the word of God is able to teach us what we must be doing as people of God. Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 21. Bible says you can make plans but the Lord's purposes will prevail. Hallelujah. You can make plans but it is the purpose of God for your life that will prevail. And so at this time of the year, it is even a good time to ask yourself, what I have been doing that seems to be struggling, was it really the plans of God? Or was it just my mind? Was it what God really wanted me to do in this year? Or was it just because I heard that it is the best thing to do, it's a good thing to do? We must be asking these questions as we come to the finish line. 
Like I said yesterday, I'm going to begin teaching you about smart goals. Your goals must be smart. As a child of God, even when God has spoken clearly. And what is SMART? It's an acronym for specific. It means my goal has to be specific. I don't want to say I want to lose some weight. So if I'm, I'm 200 pounds and I say I want to lose some weight, then of course if I lose 2 pounds and I'm 198, I lost some weight. But if the doctor says I need to lose 20 pounds, then I have to be specific. I need to lose 20 pounds. It means until I get to 180, I'm not at the finish line. Listen, when you are not specific with the plans God birthed in your heart, you wouldn't know when you are at the finish line. Every place will look like the finish line. Well, he said 20 pounds, but because that was, I was not specific about it, I got to 195 and I called it the finish line. No, that is what you call the finish line, but it's not a finish line. The reason why everything looks like the finish line is because we fail to set specific goals. A smart goal must be very specific. You can't say, I want to save some money. How much do you want to save? You make $900 a week. And you're like, I want to save some money. So this week, you're able to put $50 on the side. You're like, yeah, I saved some money. Next week, you're like, oh, you know what? I feel like shopping this week. I'm not saving anything. Well, but I saved something last week. Because you are not specific. Now, when you are specific, you say, you know what? I want to be able to have $5,000 in my bank account by the end of this year. That is a specific goal. Now, for me to accomplish that goal, I want to break it down. It means that I need a minimum of $100 every single week. It means that every week I skip putting that $100 on the side. I am not working towards the goal because that goal is specific. I said I want to get $5,000 in my savings account by the end of this year. You know what that means? $100 every week, 52 weeks is 5200 There are 52 weeks in a year. Be specific. How much weight do you want to lose? How much money do you want to save in your bank account? How much time do you want to commit to prayer? You don't say, I want to increase my prayer life. No. You've been praying once a month. When you say, I want to make sure that every single morning I wake up the first 10 minutes, I'm studying the word and praying. I'm going to read the word five minutes and pray five minutes. You are specific. What is it that you specifically want to do? I don't want to miss any church activity this year. I want to make sure that I don't miss any Sunday service this year. I want to make sure that I'm preaching the gospel once so a week. It means that my week cannot end without me presenting the gospel to one soul. So by the end of the week, I'm asking myself, this week, have I ministered the gospel of salvation to anybody? Specific goals. It is one of the reasons why our goals are not accomplished. We are not specific. So if up until now, all the plans you had for this year, you were not specific about it, you are not going to get to the finish line. Because it's, it is being specific that determines the finish line. If I said 5,000 and at this point in my, my, my year, I have 3,000, it means I'm not yet at the finish line. Where is your finish line? The only way you determine your finish line is by being specific. Where is your finish line in your prayer, prayer life? Did you say 15 minutes every, every morning? Did you say 10 minutes every morning? And have you been doing that up until now? That is your finish line. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. Where is that fight you're fighting? For you to fulfill that desire, that plan, there has to be a fight. For me to secure that 10 minutes to study the word and pray, there has to be a fight. Fighting against texting, fighting against social media, fighting with all the things that takes my 10 minutes attention from doing the things I purpose to do. I got to fight that breakfast if I want to lose some weight. I got to fight the calories. I got to fight some carbohydrate. If I want to lose that 20 pounds, I got to fight something. And Paul said, I have fought the good fight. 
Listen, it's a good fight to lose some weight. It's a good fight when you are determined to spend quality time in the Word. It's a good fight when you want to spend quality time in fellowship with God to pray and to study His Word. It is a good fight when you are fighting all other opposing things to be in the house of the Lord. Because Bible says that forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as it is the attitude of others you should not have that attitude bible says you got to fight through some things that wants to take your time wants to take your attention you want to fight those things and those are the fight bible calls timothy is being taught by paul he says this is a good fight when i'm fighting the enemies of my time when I'm fighting the enemies of my success, when I'm fighting the enemies of my God-given plans, when I'm fighting the enemies that resist me from doing the things God has called me to do, when I am fighting the elements that causes me to be ashamed of the gospel so that I don't preach the gospel to anybody, but when I fight, the only way I know I'm at the finish line, when now I'm at a place, even in a train, I'm preaching, in the bus i'm preaching on social media i'm preaching among my friends i'm speaking the gospel i've gotten to the finish line where i can confidently and boldly declare that which paul said he said i am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of god unto salvation when i get to that place well, wherever I am, regardless of my environment, I'm ready to declare my true identity as kingdom representative. And I'm now hiding who I am in Christ. Then I can say I'm at the finish line for this season. Glory to God. We are pressing into the finish line. We are pressing into the finish line. We are pressing into the finish line. What is it God told you to do in this season? It is not too late to set the finish line and you do that by being specific how much do you want to save what business exactly do you want to do when you say i want to start some business you are not being specific listen this afternoon we are praying that god in our mind will give us the ability to be specific and the spirit of god bible says will lead us into all truth what is it god has called you to do there has to be specificity you have to be specific about the thing God has called you to do even in this season. What is it in ministry God wants you to do? What is it specifically? You said you want to spend some quality time with your family. You want to spend some quality time with the children. You said you want to spend time to help the kids with their homework. Now that they are homeschooling, what exactly do you want to do? I want to spend an hour with the kids. I want to be able to do some kind of activity with my spouse. What is it that you are being specific about? lift your hands with me this afternoon and say Lord grant me the grace to be specific and not to be all over the place I pray that grace upon you this afternoon that wherever you are in the midst of confusion God will grant you clarity God will cause you to be specific in the area of your ministry in the area of your giftings in the area of your call God will grant you specific understanding and grant you specific plan concerning your school don't say i want to get another degree what is it that you want to attain academically may that grace come upon you to be specific with your assignment receive the grace to be specific and not all over the place receive that grace for ministry that grace for academics that grace for career that grace for business receive that grace of being specific even regarding your family your marriage the lives of your children your parents whatever your calling is receive that grace this afternoon that you will become specific and not a man and a woman that is confused all over the place not sure what to do may the spirit of god bible says and this is jesus speaking he says when you have a single eye your light becomes great bible says that a man that is double-minded i want to do this i want to do that i want to do you're all over the place a little of this business a little of this business even in america corporate america understand what is called core competence it means focusing on where your strength is not doing everything paul said i can do all things anything i want to do i can do it but it's not everything that is of benefit to me 
Where is it that God wants you to have the most benefit? Be specific and with the grace of God, accomplish that assignment even for this season. May that grace be upon you this afternoon. As you stand in prayer, may the Lord bring enlightenment to your mind. As you stand in the place of prayer, may the Lord show you exactly what he will have you do in this season. Even as he said in his word, many are the plans in the heart of the man. Many, many. We could be all over the place. But it is the counsel, the plan of God that shall prevail. And that is the spirit of being specific. God is not the author of confusion. He wants you to be specific on what he has called you to do. And child of God, as you do so, grace would have bound unto you. Bible says his manifold blessings and grace would abound to you and you would finish that which God called you to do in this season. Until tomorrow same time, I love you child of God. Grace and peace to you. Shalom.